Hey guys, and welcome to my sketchbook tour. Um, so this is a bit of a strange one because I actually started it in like 2020 um, and finished it in 2022. So yeah, a bit of a long one, but there is a reason for it, which I shall explain now. So the first sketch in this sketchbook is just of my paint set, which I believe, yeah, was my new... St. Petersburg White Knights watercolour set. So that was February 2020. So almost exactly, pretty much exactly two years ago. And then I wrote here as well what different colours were. And it's funny looking at this now. These just seem so like opaque. I must have painted it really thickly. I was very excited about getting this new kind of compact set of colours. Um, and I'd really wanted the White Knights for a long time. I think pretty much because of Alicia Aradia. So I forgot to say actually this book is a Sea White of Brighton. And I've never actually tried one of their sketchbooks before. So I bought this A5, just the watercolour travel sketchbook. And um, oh, and the ribbon's just broken off. Never mind. And I didn't, when I first opened it, I was like, hmm, I don't know if I like this paper. It seemed a bit creamy and I didn't like the look of the texture and stuff like that. Now I look at it and I'm like, I don't even know what I was thinking or what I was talking about. So I definitely obviously got past whatever I initially didn't like about this book. Um, what I do like about it as well is that it is properly full A5, unlike the, the moleskin. Hang on, let me just get one. It's like a bit shorter. It's like the same length, but not the same height. And maybe that's just because moleskin is um, like got inches, works in inches, maybe more of an American size or whatever. And Sea Whites of Brighton are a British company, so they actually work in the European kind of A sizes. But I like it. It's it's a better, feels like a better size for me than the moleskin size. So I like doing that on the first page, the, the art supplies. Um, this one was a bit of a, this was actually from a photo and it's just a hectic scene and I just, I was just practicing with the paper. I just wanted to try something. It was a bit of an experiment. I kind of like some of this vague background detail here, but yeah, it was just an experiment. And this was also an experiment which turned out really, really, really cool. I love this sketch so much. More of a traditional watercolour approach in that there's no ink lines. I just drew it very lightly with pencil and then drew the, um, painted the whole thing with watercolour. Just really love how the clouds came out in the background. It just came together perfectly. And this is um, of a view looking through uh, St. Michael's Tower in Glastonbury, which is on uh, Glastonbury Tor, which is the hill. And this is in my Etsy shop and it's one of my most ordered prints. And I do understand why I actually ordered a test print of this particular piece. And I've got it somewhere here, I think. And I'm actually really keen to put it on the wall. I just really like how it came out. This one is also of Glastonbury Tour. This is the whole tower. So this other one was just the doorway. This is the whole tower. And this was a couple of my friends, uh, silhouettes of my friends. And I was just playing with some lettering and stuff again. Just trying to get used to the sketchbook. This is actually one of my favourite sketches. Um, I just really love how it came out and I just focused on the, the front part of the building and just kind of didn't bother with the rest of it. But yeah, it just came out super nice. I'm really, really happy with that. So that was again from a photo of a building um, when I was visiting Cartagena uh, in Spain. And this was when I was in Kingston in London. I had a, an idea of doing something quite graphic and symmetrical of these two sort of a section of the church that I was looking at, basically. Didn't quite come out how I wanted in my head, but it's, you know, it's an experiment. But I do like how these kind of bricks kind of came out and some of the textures that I managed to get. I forget what I did now, but it must be like a watercolour pencil or colouring pencil or something after the fact. And I do quite like the texture that's on there. These are more from photos. I just wanted to try drawing a beetle. Love beetles, big fan of VWs. I've owned three different VW camper vans in the past. Never owned a beetle, but just love the shape. And the V 
VWs, old VWs are hugely popular in Mexico. So everywhere I looked, there's always these beautiful Beatles, uh, either really done up or just hideously on their last legs. Whichever way, I just find them really beautiful. This was another one from a photo I took when I was visiting Cork in Ireland, the St. Finbar Cathedral, which is just a really beautiful cathedral. Um, I quite like how this came out. Yeah. And I was sort of experimenting with doing like a shape in the background. I can't remember why, but I th I think, I think because of Liz Steele, maybe, I think maybe she does something like that occasionally. But you can see I sort of <laughs> couldn't quite get the top of the tower in. And then I think I got a gouache set. Um, I think I bought myself a gouache set. I think it's the Hemi... Let me get it, hang on. It's this uh, ever so popular, I think you've probably seen it on multiple YouTube videos, but this Hemi gouache set, I think I actually covered the name with this sticker. This is by um, Captain Tom, awesome urban sketcher in Canada. So this is one of his stickers. I haven't made a video on this set. Uh, just, I felt like there were so many videos on YouTube about this set, but if you guys are interested, then let me know and I'll make a video on it. So yeah, I was taking my first sort of few tentative steps into gouache painting, not something I've done too much of, but I was really happy with how these came out. I taped the edges nicely and just went for it really. And these are both scenes from the Great Ocean Road in Australia. So me and Duncan went to visit Duncan's family and me, Duncan and Duncan's mum went to visit the family over there, um, they're all over the place, but me and Duncan went off and did a little road trip along the Great Ocean Road. And so these were some of the, the sites that we saw. Yeah, I was really, really happy with how this came out. Some of these textures, this can be really tricky, I think, to represent like cliff face or rock like that. I'm quite happy with this water here too. This was a, another gouache experiment. <laughs> which was looking hideous for approximately two hours and I was getting really frustrated and I think I was visiting home at the time because I remember doing this on my parents kitchen table and just getting really stressed and like ah it just looks rubbish and I think my mum was like yeah you always say that but it always ends up all right and actually I think this ended up really nicely I really like some of the reflections on the water and I was doing some swatches over here so actually it's not too bad and again sort of first time doing these kinds of scenes as well you know so I'm just I, I don't really know what I'm doing to be honest I'm just trying it out one of my old favorites sketching crumbly doorways love this again really like the texture that I got on this door I think either watercolor pencil use dry or coloring pencil can't remember but yeah quite like how this one came out um here <laughs> this is just a fake rock <laughs> that's in the garden that is actually a water feature. So if you switch it on, I think it's a bit broken though. It kind of just leaks water down and I don't know, it's, we inherited it. It's a bit strange to be honest, but the cat loves it. It's like her favorite sitting place, obviously when it's not on, only when it's dry, but she sort of lounges on this. So um, yeah, we don't get rid of the broken water feature because it's the, one of the cat's favorite places, such as life as a cat owner, um, as I'm beginning to realize. This was also from a photo, just practicing street scenes, practicing trying to get some people in. I think practicing from photos is absolutely valid and it's actually a really good thing to do. And um, especially if you're either not confident urban sketching, you don't want to urban sketch, you just want to, you just want to sketch from photos or, you know, you just want to practice your skills and I don't have these scenes on my doorstep. I was living in this area for a lot of 2019, but I like to look back at my photos and I like to practice. Like, how would I, if I was sitting here, how would I, how would I capture this scene? I don't want to, you know, sit out there, you know, be somewhere amazing like this and spend two or three hours drawing it and then it just be like really not what I want it to be. So if I feel like if I can keep practicing scenes like this from photos, then, you know, when I hopefully do find myself traveling again um, and I'm sat in front of something like this, I know I can nail it, you know. I obviously must have started something on this page and just didn't get around to finishing it. This is a video I have on YouTube about loose ink and watercolor sketching. Sketching with a Fude uh, pen, with this Sailor Fude pen. Also a scene from Mexico, Mexico City, this building.
Uh, I also have a video, a YouTube video on this. It was our first Urban Sketches meetup in Johannesburg since COVID had hit. So it was like really special. And it, we got a exclusive invite to go and sketch at the headquarters of the Order of St. John up on Westcliff Hill. So that was really nice. And there was this weird little Tudor kind of building in the grounds, which I really liked. And then these are just more practice um, sketches. So I... Have, I did have a workshop happening in Morocco, but unfortunately Omicron hit and things went backwards uh, back, back in January or December, I think it was. And we just decided, you know what, let's just postpone it for a little while until things calm down because I just didn't feel like Morocco in March was going to be something many people were comfortable with yet. So hopefully either later in the year or 2023, but I'll let everyone know I will be holding my first workshop in Morocco so this I was I think I was watching a Shari Blaukopf course on Craftsy probably for about the 15th time over the years um and she was showing watercolor skies so I was just trying to just trying to play around that uh, this scene was just from imagination just trying to play with my colors this one is uh from a photo on Pinterest of an abandoned prison tower I think I did it for Halloween because I thought you know let's just do something kind of spooky <laughs> So uh, there is a video on YouTube of this one. And then I've been really um, inspired by the work of John Lovett, an Australian painter um, or watercolour or mixed media, I guess, artist. And um, I just wanted to try and, not that this is anything like him at all, I'm not saying that, but I just wanted to try and play with some more layers and trying uh, to make some parts faint. And I just saw this photo of this window and I was like, let's just, you know, play with some different techniques and I got white gouache out and I was layering things and just really trying to make it look, I don't know if scuzzy is the, <laughs> is the right word, but scuzzy in a good way. <laughs> and this video is on Patreon. So if you're a Patreon, you would have seen that. Uh, if you're not a Patreon, how about checking it out? Uh, link is in the description below. Cheeky plug. So this um, scene was from when we went to uh, Kruger National Park. I have never been before, so I was so excited. And yeah, I was just outside of our cottage and just painted the scene of the Crocodile River and stuff like that. It was beyond hot. It was so, so hot. We're basically right on the border with Mozambique. And yeah, so being outside for any length of time when there was... Uh, air conditioned <laughs> room two steps away was um, yeah so I had to do that quick is basically what I was saying but you know it's basic but it's okay it's a nice memory anyway and then there was these cool pictures these uh, watercolour pictures inside the house one was of a giraffe and the other one was of a wild dog and I just really loved the style of it so much so I was like, oh, I'm going to try and figure out how they did this or how it works and stuff like that. So this is kind of my copy of that painting. But I think it kind of came out OK, but the shape of the dog's head is a bit weird. This sketch is some of you may recognize from my video called My Secret Weapons for Contrast. So I was demonstrating what, what I use to emphasize the contrast in some of my sketches. So it's just a... Just a random picture from Pinterest. And this one is another street scene, um, another photograph of mine from Guanajuato in Mexico. And I'd been watching some Inma Serrano stuff, I think, on the Sketchbook School Urban Sketching course. And I mean, if anyone's watched, I feel like I've talked about Inma Serrano quite a lot lately, but maybe that's just in my head. But anyway, I just love, 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 love in Mosorano right now. And not, again, that this looks anything like her, but it was done after watching some of her stuff and I was just trying to be crazy and, like, loose, but I just don't feel like I can get there yet, but I'm working on it. These were some more watercolour skies. It was super stormy outside here and the sky was just crazy, so I was trying to capture it. This one kind of turned out to be a mess. Yeah, it just wasn't working at all. This one, I really like. I really like the, it's completely, you know, wet and wet, trying to get the clouds and stuff. And then also even just all the different colour variations in these, in this foliage as well. I, I had to write myself a note so I can remember what I did. So this is like indigo, quinadricone rose and Indian gold. And uh, in the sky we've got quin rose, indigo and bright blue. 
and maybe we've got a base of yellow ochre because you can see that kind of yellowy shine through and that's something I learned from Shari, Shari Blaukopf. This was done in Pretoria on location when all the jacarandas were out. It was really awesome. Accidentally parked outside of an artist's house who was really cool and let us come in and see his house. I have a whole YouTube video on that if you haven't seen it. This one I was practicing oceanscapes and this was from the Great Ocean Road as well, so from photographs, but it was because of the hashtag Team Seas campaign that had been launched on YouTube and I wanted to do something related. I really like elements of how these came out. I need to keep working on on rocks and stuff like that and, and maybe waves and whatnot, but I really like some of the elements, the skies, I really like how they came out and some of the sort of subtle reflections in the, in the water. Need to keep working on it, but yeah, liking some elements of that. This was still from the Jacaranda video. Um, this was a commission um, very recently that one of my friends asked me to paint the wedding venue um, for her friends, or as a wedding reception venue, an old pub in the UK. Unfortunately, there were just no good pictures of this pub online, and they hadn't been there yet, so um, I just did what I could really. So this was a rough sketch and figuring out um, some wet on wet, different combinations of colours. Really um, recommend having a go at that yourself. Just see how different colours react with each other, wet on wet and stuff like that. This is exactly what sketchbooks are for. This is, you know, it's really fun. Uh, it took me a while to stop being precious over sketchbooks and now I'm like, scrawl all over it like, hey. <laughs> this was awesome. This was so much fun. I went to the bird sanctuary with another member of the Urban Sketches group and we just drew birds live the best we could, you know. And so these were my warm-up sketches of the lorikeets. Uh, they were really difficult because they were just jumping around all over the place going crazy because they were waiting for their food. This guy just kept pacing up and down so it wasn't too difficult. And you could see I was just starting off with heads, you know, just trying to keep it simple. And I was using this zebra pen, which is like a like a hard nibbed kind of uh, like fude pen almost. You can get a nice line variation with it. So that was really fun. It worked really cool for this and it was like made really nice bold lines. I really like this peacock. He was not in a in an enclosure or anything. He was just pacing up and down and shaking his feathers and stuff like that. So again, if you're a, if you're a member of my Patreon, you would have seen the video I made on, on this. But if you guys have something similar nearby, it sounds scary, but it was just so much fun trying to draw birds from life. Really, really fun. The only thing that sort of cut things short was that it started to rain a bit. So and um, my pen was just smudging all over the place and it was just a bit of a nightmare. So that's why there's just like dirty marks all over the place. Yeah, you can see the rain, spl <laughs> rain splashes. It was frustrating because I was having so much fun. I didn't want to leave, but it was just becoming too hard. There was nowhere under cover to paint. So this was the last one. I actually painted this at home, but I did the line work under a little ledge because he was behind glass. So I was trying to, trying to sketch him. I like how this came out as well. And then uh, lately we've been visiting the local casino because uh, it's like faux Italian architecture there. And here in Johannesburg, we were sort of lacking a bit in, in terms of interesting architecture. So even though it's not real, it's really fun to draw. And I'm actually really happy that we're doing this now. So we seem to go there, well, we do go there once a week. Again, I've got sketch vlogs on these uh, over on Patreon. If you want to check those out, you can join up. There's a, a link below if you want to. And this is a tower from Monte Cassino. So this was done on... Um, sorry, this was done on one visit, this was done on a second visit, and then this one was like, <laughs> this one was a two-parter, so I did all the line work. Again, you can see the sketch vlog of this over on Patreon, um, so yeah, I did all the line work. This is still the casino, this is outside, but look how awesome, it just looks like you're in Italy for a second, especially if you're drunk, you probably wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, I painted it on the second visit. So I was really happy with how this came out, all the different layers of the rooftops and stuff like that. And then over on Patreon, January has been perspective month. So we've been looking each week at uh, some elements of perspective. So week one, we looked at one point perspective and I painted this. Um, but then I felt like it was a simple one to start everyone off on. So let's do something a bit more complicated as well. So this is also one point perspective. This was like 
super crazy to draw, but it was quite fun. And uh, I give you reference photos for all of these as well. And then in week two of Perspect... Nope, sorry, I jumped the gun there. Duncan and I went off to about three hours north of where we are, out into the bush towards the Botswana border. And we stayed at this cottage in the middle of nowhere. And it was actually Duncan's sister's wedding gift to us to come and stay here because they always used to come and stay um, as a family like back in the day and they just love it so much. So yeah, I was sitting here and I was like, I just want to get like as much of the scene in as possible. This was so much fun to draw, guys. Like it didn't really come out as as awesome as I wanted it to, but I just feel like I'm sitting here on my chair, you know? And I'm seeing all these things. It was just so great, so much fun. I even got my car in back here, my little chimney. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I really want to do more of these where it's like the whole, really like a full view, kind of a full vista. So yeah, that was really fun. Now, sorry, then we moved on to uh, week two of Perspective. So we did two point perspective and I give reference photos for, th for this as well as other scenes that you might want to have a go at. And then this was week three of perspective month. So we did three point perspective. Again, uh, there's the video demo of this as well as reference photos for this and other scenes. And then finally we did non-linear perspective. So zero point perspective. So I, I chose this scene but I provide some other scenes as well. And then here is just practicing some people sketching. Uh, this one was from a photo, but these were from being at the casino. I really want to do more people sketching, but I'm just, uh, I'm just not making myself do it, but I'm sure it will come. Here I was testing out some Daniel Smith um, paints. I got given a dot card by um, a member of the Urban Sketching Group. Uh, so they were the Primatec watercolours and they're made out of genuine min minerals. So some of them are, are sparkling. So I did make a video on this, such I'm going to put on Patreon soon. And then here was some practice for my mixing of neutrals. I do have a video on this with the Daniel Smith primary colours and how they mix together to make neutrals. So you can check that out on my YouTube channel if you like. And then here's just me messing around. Um, and I don't think I've got anything in my pocket. Nope. So thus concludes my sketchbook. Oh yeah, I, t I was totally forgot to tell you why I, it jumps from 2020 to end of 2021. I bought this book to take with me to South Sudan and unfortunately it was too big to fit in the, the pouch of my bag. So I had to, uh, I used it for a few days and then I was like, oh, it doesn't fit in my bag. So I actually had to buy a moleskin <laughs> um, because this one did actually fit in my bag. So... I didn't take it with me to South Sudan, which by the way, I have a video on one of my much older videos. If you want to check that out, the sketches I did whilst I was visiting South Sudan and I never came home from South Sudan. I never returned to the UK after that um, because a little thing called COVID hit. It was March, 2020. I managed to just get out of South Sudan in time before borders closed. And I managed to get myself on a plane to Johannesburg and to my then boyfriend, now husband, it was the best decision I ever made because then I got locked down here in South Africa and I didn't have to leave, even though I didn't have a, a proper visa. So uh, although my, my tourist visa ran out, I got to stay in South Africa for well over a year. So uh, that actually worked out very nicely for me <laughs> and for my, my husband. So uh, yeah, so this was in the UK. So I've only recently got it back in the last couple of months and have been starting to, to use it more. And now I've finished it. But yeah, if Sea Whites of Brighton was available here in South Africa, I would have no hesitation buying one of these sketchbooks again. They're a really good price. I think they're the same sort of price as a moleskin, or if not, possibly cheaper. I don't know. Uh, I like the format, the bigger A5 size. If it fits in your bag, it's perfect. The paper's nice. It works well. It's totally fine for wet on wet. Of course, it wrinkles a bit, but any sketchbook of this any any sketchbook paper is going to wrinkle a bit anyway. So yeah, I do recommend it. It's a nice affordable sketchbook that you're not going to be too precious about and that you can take around with you. So I hope you guys enjoyed looking through my sketchbook. Um, I am working in multiple sketchbooks at the moment. I don't have one, one linear kind of um, thing going on, but um, as soon as I finish more of them, I will absolutely share them with you guys. 
I have no, I have no ego, no pride or, uh, or no preciousness about my sketchbooks. I'll show them to you guys because I just love experimenting. And I think it's hopefully valuable for you guys to see that. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. Do remember that right now my ink and watercolour sketching course is available. It's only open till Tuesday the 1st of February, so please be quick. There are a few spaces left. You can head over to sketchyouradventures.com to check it out. And also check out Patreon as well. Do you consider joining because I've got loads of uh, content coming for Patreon and there's a lot there to get your teeth into already. So yeah, that's it from me and I will see you in my next video.